Okay. So now what we are going to do is uh, we'll just ask uh, we'll just ask Khalid to just do a standard ERCP. So you have an idea before you actually go with your um, you know with the candidates uh, how um, easy or difficult ERCP is when when they are doing or we are doing by ourselves. And obviously when we are trying to do it and let you play with the ampulla, it obviously makes it difficult for us as well. But that's why we are here. So we will see his this one case and then one after the other you guys will be going there. The video will be transmitted here. In the meantime, we can also see um, those who, have, who want to have a go here with the change, exchange and whatnot, we can continue it here. Um, what we want you to do is when you go there, you find out where you think is your, are your weaknesses. So it would be nice when you are standing before you start, you tell us that this is where I want to focus in this particular case. So let's say you have three issues you know, or two problems that really bother you sometimes. So you pick those and you tell us that these are the two things I want to focus on. The rest obviously will happen anyway, but you want to focus on that so that we can emphasize more on those, okay? So that way um, we can cover up individual, uh, individual uh, difficulties, okay? Um, any questions from what Khalid has just told? When I'm can sorry, go ahead. Sometimes when we are doing there's a stone nearly at the bottom of the CBD. We're trying to get the wire out for that. We don't know where you are actually. How do we go about it? I think Khalid very nicely demonstrated and we were just talking, Mustafa and I we were talking about it, that when when you are in the duct, you know you're in the duct but you're not getting anywhere. Rather than poking and trying to keep pushing the wire or advancing the wire, rather than doing that, just inject a little bit of dye. It will actually show you where you have to go. And then quite often what you can do is you can use the bow, sometimes come more towards the interior side by bowing or you can then see whether you need to advance the scope and give yourself a position or you can use the small wheel um, to go and align yourself with the bile duct. So you have multiple options but that will only be possible if you know where you have to go and uh, sometimes you just need to pull it back and as you pull it back it straightens and, and you can just advance the wire. So, so I don't think there is any problem injecting dye. I think the point I was making that I don't in my practice is because if there is an obstruction, uh, then I don't, standard practice may I don't inject guy, uh, dye. I would inject after I've crossed the stricture with the wire and my cannula is up, then I'm, then I'm comfortable, I know that I will be able to drain that system. Uh, this is particularly uh, relevant in, I, I feel in our practice because our, um, we reuse accessories, we do things that are obviously not done in the, in the, in the developed world or the western world and so we have to keep that in mind. I mean we haven't talked about antibiotics. Uh, I know uh, there's a different policy um, um, elsewhere. Uh, Mustafa, what is your policy, antibiotic policy at the moment for ERCP? So everybody with COVID-19 is immunosuppressed transplant patients. But even like biliary obstruction from pancreatic cancer, I don't do antibiotics. Um, benign stricture repeat procedures, I may not do antibiotics. So specific immunosuppressed, so transplant or otherwise, and then definitive infection. Those are the main ones, but not everybody. Okay, unlike uh, your experience, um, uh, here we, um, use antibiotics standard uh, in all cases, okay? And uh, whether, uh, obviously, even if we have drained the system, um, and as I said, that's for the reasons that I just discussed. 
do we have evidence to support what we are doing? Um, individual observations, yes, but I think that's something that I was going to sit down during this course and try and um, try and work out as to see whether what is actually our infection risk. Um, the problem with our unit is that we are by and large a referral center, so a lot of patients come from elsewhere and then they go back. So we sometimes won't don't get to know. Um, it's not easy. I mean, the pancreatitis thing we did. Basically, we had, we kept the patients here and we followed them, and it was it was quite an undertaking here because the numbers keep changing, people keep changing their mobiles, and so you just can't go back and ask people. But I think that's something we need to look at uh, objectively. So basically, cholangitis. Actually, what is the risk of cholangitis in in our population and in our practice in our hands? I think that would be. So we use. As a practice, we use antibiotics, and my patients are all on antibiotics for five days, uh, regardless of what they've had. Uh, Can you patient okay. before, no, my patient, the our patients are, I've been doing outpatient ERCP since 1994. Because the unit that I was trained, we had this practice even there. And I've never admitted anybody unless there is a reason for that. Specifically, but standard stone extraction, stenting, etc. Neither do we admit them before, nor do we admit them after. So yeah. our patients go home in two to four hours max. Uh, almost 97% of my patients would go home in two to four hours. Yes, yeah, same here. We don't admit unless there is like a high risk procedure. Or if the patient's not doing well in recovery, you know. Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah. if you've done a procedure and your patient's you complaining of abdominal yeah, pain, then, then that you have to keep them. More. Yeah. But uh, but generally, the patients are well. Exactly. Um, so we were talking about sedation while we were waiting. Um, as I said, most of our patients are done under sedation, conscious sedation. We use midazolam. Um, anybody who is over 65 or is frail, we would not go over 2 milligrams of midazolam. Okay? And usually 2 milligrams of nalbifin or kins. Uh, anybody who is, uh, people who are less than 65, then we, we would be uh, and otherwise okay. And we can usually start with 2.5, 2.5 or 3, 3, and then increase if necessary. But we, I really don't remember going above 5 milligrams, because I don't feel comfortable. So, if I feel that I'm giving sedation and the patient's actually not cooperative or is not, uh, you know, he's not settled, rather than risking my patient, I would just cancel their procedure. Hello? Um, Muslim, sir. Can you hear me? Can you hear us? My lists are all covered by me. Hello? Is there a connect? Hello? For the reasons, obviously now I don't do standard procedures because standard care yeah, difficult also because all the procedures are done by professors. So I or pancreatic or pediatric. And I said Hello? quite a lot of pediatric cases. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear me too? We can hear you loud and clear, but we can't see you. Okay. So now we can see you as well. 